we're here at the Royal Mint to give you an insight onto how they make coins, medals, and more. And there are so many items produced here at the Royal Mint, and they use an awful lot of metal, from gold, silver, bronze, and anything in between. And when it comes to taking that metal and making it into something like a medal, then that process is absolutely fascinating. And it turns out the Royal Mint is very good at taking raw nuggets of metal and turning it into anything they want. Now, this is undoubtedly a beautiful medal, but obviously they don't just come like this, right? Where does the process start? How does the metal come to you? And what do you need to do to, to get to even the very start of making a medal? Well, the silver is not, uh, we don't uh, make the silver ourselves. It's actually bought in. So what we do, we buy the silver in, which comes as a granule. Right. Uh, we just take what we need, whether the metal is 200 grams or 250 grams or whatever you need. We would then uh, put it into a little furnace, which is which is behind us, uh -huh. which will then obviously melt into a, a lovely silver liquid, and we have a mold, which will pour into which will pour into a mold, and obviously after cooling and cleaning and all that, it will turn into a lovely lovely little button, which Gosh. is what which is what all, of course you can, which is what all prize medals start as. Wow, and it's, again, it's not light, is it? No, it's not light. How heavy is this one? I believe that one is 250 grams. And is this how it starts? This is how it starts. Just a, uh, let's just grab a couple of samples. Just, just <laughs> little granules of silver. They look like little sweets of silver, don't they? The things that you put on top of cupcakes. Yeah. <laughs> and what what's this called? It's. Uh, we call this two one one grain. Two so, one grain, of course you do. Uh, because it's the purity of the silver, uh, and just a, just a lovely name as well. So it goes from the grain to the button, but there's a whole process that happens via melting process. Yes, it's a melting, cleaning, and then the button is ready to continue to become a metal. Gosh, and can we see that process of a button being made? I believe we can. Over here. Have a look. Cool. button here and then does it cool immediately or do you have to wait a few minutes before you can lift it out of the mold? What we do, we ha we sometimes have a little pot or a bath of uh, sulfuric acid. No. I believe it's about five or ten percent. I could be wrong but I'm sure it's about that and we dip it we dip it in there because as it's hot uh, the sulfuric acid likes to eat all the dirt or anything like that mm -hmm. that's in there, like either from the crucible or from the material itself. So the button does come out relatively clean. So it, that's the best way we do the cool things. And so working with these metals, right? You're working with silver here. Silver is not cheap stuff, but you must get some bits of waste that don't quite fit in the mold, fit in the dye, all that kind of stuff, like what happens to the weight? Well, we actually have our own processing, which allows us to recycle all metal waste that we usually have, whether it's 
gold or silver. We essentially collect all the material that uh, that would usually be wasted, like oh, in the bin or whatever, and we would actually melt it down into our own cast bars. Nice! And can we see them? Of course you can. Uh, what we have is our is the metal that we have that are recycled. So any unused blanks or any unused silver, for example, when I'm filing, we would collect it all and we would put it all in a crucib uh, crucible and, me and melt it down in our room next door. Once they're all melted and cleaned into a lovely bar like this with a lovely finish, they will be checked in our science labs for its, for its purity. Because uh, any any nasty materials that you don't want in there, yeah. they'll just say, no, nope, not good enough, chuck it out. But all the good ones will then come to this stage, which is the embossing stage, where we nice. would uh, where we'd imprint our own logo, say what material is, how much it weighs, and a lovely bar, uh, little rectangular bar at the bottom where we can engrave it. And is that done just so people know what that bar is made of and how much it weighs and all of that? Like, is it like sort of like a barcode? Kind of sort of like a barcode. And with the individual engraving, uh, you can you can notify us or you know exactly that that bar is that bar. There's no other bar like that. There's no bar with that exact code on it. And can we see that embossing process? We can do it right now if you like. Oh, yep, yeah, please. Okay. Well, how do, how does that happen? What I would do is take the file. Right. And I would chuck it into this press. Well, obviously not chuck it. Place it where it needs to be. Yeah. Green button. And then. And that's it. Done. So it's like a, it's like a stamp, essentially. Yes, yeah, so it's a stamp. <laughs> Tells you how much it weighs, all the rest of it. Do you want to have a go? I'd love a go. Yes, please. Of course you can. If I put it in there for you. Yeah. Very easy. In we go. See the green button on the I side? I certainly do. Press that once. Keep it held. You can if you want to. There you go. And that's it. <laughs> and you've made your very own bar. That's amazing. I, I just made this. That's so cool. There are so many processes that go into making medals and it takes knowledge from all the different parts of STEM to know how to use those processes. So yeah, when you're making an object, sometimes it is about knowing about one specific process. But when you know about lots of processes and how to use them together, that's when you can make something truly special. For more about what goes on here at the Royal Mint, check out all of our videos at royalmintmuseum.org.uk.